guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to today's Captain's Vlog. It's 12.20 hours on Friday, October 3rd, 2014. Did I mention we got a fire truck? I just had a meeting with um, a local higher up in the Grand Rapids Fire Department Brass. They're going to help us out in getting some really cool equipment for demonstration use. It's going to be a lot of fun. And you're going to see a lot of fun things happen with this in the next week. It's going to be really cool. So give us an update. Where are we at, sir? Uh, finished another operation on the cylinders. Yeah, these are looking cool. They got the thing in there. They're still really sharp. Yeah, they're going to be uh, filed down. Okay, are we going to tumble them or what? Uh, thinking about it. But uh, we just need to drill the hole and ream that and these will be done. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, getting close. What's the next stop? What's what's today? Uh, today is going to be cranks. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, lathe work. Yes, lathe work. Cool. Hey, while you're doing that on a lathe, you can finish these up on the uh, Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. All right. Why do you make Daddy sad? <laughs> Cool. Well, you kick ass on that, sir. That's going to be cool. Did I mention we got a fire truck? Have you seen the fire truck of awesomeness? It's kind of cool because the room's a bit of a mess. We just parked fire truck in here for the VIP tours today, and they don't even notice the shit laying around here. are like, holy fuck, you got a fire truck. How cool is that? So a lot of people were asking about stuff um, in the IRC. I found a bit of information you're going to want to know. You're going to want to know about this. especially if it's in focus. Okay, so you want that. This says Echo-0414, okay? Ah, it was originally designed and built for the Ross Township Fire Department. Pierce job number Echo-0414, 750 gallons per minute at 150 PSI, 2914 RPM. 525 gallons per minute at 200 PSI, 2935 RPM. 375 gallons per minute at 250 PSI, 3115 RPM. Governored speed is 4000 RPM. So here's our relief valve and the indicators for it. Primer, engine cooler, recirc, um, tank discharges down here. So to, I, I watched a lot of videos last night for fire department training and I learned all the basic operations of this. I, there's, I still don't know shit about it, but I, I understand like the fundamentals and I also learned that fire department training videos, oh my god are they bad at making videos. So we're going to make some fire department training videos and do it right. And uh, we've got to update because we're still using the old threaded fittings. We've got we to gotta get the modern ones, the, the sexless fittings. Sexless, much like Doogie. Sexless. You're practically a, a seahorse. A seahorse. Yeah, a seahorse. They're asexual. Well, hermaphroditic, really. <laughs> Which fits for you. We can go with that. Okay. Oh my god! Did you do that for Vita Vainagun? In celebration? Look at that. Oh, it's so much better. It's so much better. The whole world can see your giant butt. <laughs> Look! He finally shaved them off! Not it off. I shaved too. Them. Them. We're both them. clean, clean, we clean. match. I need the trickle charger. The trickle charger? It's in the back. Or not the trickle charger. He just wants to rub up against you and get trickle charged. I want to put the big goddamn charger on the big goddamn truck. Okay. You had it in your car. I had right? to push that one for you, yeah. You had the charger in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a driveway and oh. I just had to unwedge it from the parking space. Okay. It was easy after that. So you're going to be rocking ass on that today? We're going to get shit done. Okay. It's a day of awesome accomplishment and VIP tours. I have a lot of professional butt kisses after, today. After your car, van needs love. Okay. Mostly wiring hound job. I'm cool with that. Oh, okay. for him, find the fox and hound. Yeah. Okay. I will do this. Okay. I've been meaning to get you to do that for like a week, and you're never around when he is and it's needed. And you're a half an hour late for work, by the way. So, all right, we're going to go to work because i got to yell at more people. Because Rocco just showed up. Show him a label on the bottom left corner. Hi. What? Where? What? Uh, I Water's still. Oh, down here. here. What? I gotta show you that. Did you just show it? No. Oh. Uh, CTGWBX. Okay. That should be able to find the manual to operate this beast. 
Well, between that and the job number and all that, we should be able to find a manual. But right. there really isn't a lot to know to operate it. Right. And oh yeah, the head of training for the Grand Rapids Fire Department is right. a buddy of ours, so right. he'll sort that out. We know a lot of firemen dudes. It's really cool, actually. It's like we've had them here. To one, <laughs> yeah, like, well. <laughs> once a year, annual. You know, it'd be fun is if once a year, instead of having them come for an emergency, we come for a barbecue or something. We're yeah. actually going to have something f like that for this very soon. There is a tradition, and this goes back to like the, the turn of the last century, mm -hmm. when they would retire the horse that pulled the fire pump. Right. Because the horse gets changed out every few years. They bring a new one in. They would baptize the horse in what's called a wet down ceremony. Okay. And what happens nowadays is it's called a, it's still called a wet down ceremony. When a fire department retires a fire truck, all the guys get together and they push the truck out of the barn. And the new truck shows up, and all the neighboring towns show up with their fire crews, and they hose down the truck. Like, it's, okay. it's, it's a tradition thing. And then the crew pushes the new truck into the barn. And it's, a th it's called a wet-down ceremony. It's like a baptism for a fire truck. So we'll be coming with our They don't do them in now. Grand Rapids, but I talked to my guy, and he's like, that would be so much fun! And I'm like, cool, we should do this. He's like, yes, we never get to do that. So, because we got a fire department right up the road. Right. So we're going to do a wet-down ceremony, because we got a brand new fire truck. Well, brand new to us. It's 30 years old, but it's new to us. And yeah, so we're going to do a wet-down ceremony. Huh? You said you got a brand new fire truck. You're going to push the old one or fire extinguisher? Yeah, we'll take an extinguisher and push it out. <laughs> we'll be back. All right, some basic info here. There. All right. So, Moose kind of screwed up the live show a little bit, and God knows how much blog you just missed, but, just in, are we recording? Yes. Are you sure? 20, 30 seconds now. Okay. So, thank you to Bolt Depot for the massive donation of stuff. I don't know if that made it into the blog or not, but we'll see. As some of you may have noticed, we got a fire truck recently, and to do that we had to do a big fundraiser in order to get the fire truck. And we thought it would be a cool thing, as part of the fundraiser, we made, a, we made an offer. This was actually Casey's idea. Casey said that he would be willing to, to raffle off... Some in the front. Huh? He would be willing... Yeah, but that's, that's Derek C. and Jay Cassidy. We don't like them. Mm -hmm. um, he would be willing to raffle off serial number two, because serial number one is going to go in the display case, of the Model 1 uh, um, steam engines to if they were able to finish the fundraiser in that day, which was like the day before yesterday. They did it, they finished it. So what we did in order to make it fair is every person who donated gets their name, this is Harvey, on a piece of paper. Here's Matt Noonan and Massive H. And to make it fair, not only did we put everybody's name on a piece of paper, they get their name on a piece of paper, here's Alex P, and for every dollar they spent. So if you donated a hundred bucks, there's a hundred pieces of paper in here with your name on it. If you donated five bucks, there's five pieces of paper in here with your name on it, because we felt we should make it fair to everybody. So, this has to be done double blind. So what I'm going to do, in order to, give me the big box down here, in order to ensure that they are properly mixed, I'm going to take all the names, you can see the box is empty, okay, I'm going to take all the names and I'm going to dump them into the thing, I'm going to make sure I get all, shut up, I dropped a couple, I know, it's not the end of the world. About where the pot dropped. Huh? About where the pot dropped. Oh, they're back here. Oh, that's a Z's. We don't like him anymore. All right, so they're in the box, and now I can properly mix them. Are there any more? Did we get them all? Rocco, you see any? I still want to soft all that. Okay, that's all we have. So I'm mix them around. I'm going to close the box. Now I need a short person that we can trust. Kelly, come here. Now you can't look into the box because it's got to be double blind. Okay, so, reach into the box and pull out a name. 
Not him. He's a dick. Okay. You sure? Yep. All right. It is Massive H is the winner. So there you have it. That's the winner of the raffle. Everybody, Massive H won the raffle. Yay! Yay! Really? That's the fucking best you can do? <laughs> That's today's viewer mail. You guys have fun, and now it's time for lunch. Isn't it cool that we've got a new intern to Hayes today? She's gone today. There was another one. I thought he was right. just on. Right. And he's Italian. Right there. Right there. <laughs> carrying games with y'all. Oh. We'll be back after this. Massive H donated a lot. Hi. Hi. I hear you got a really cool box in the mail. I was supposed to come like yeah. talk to you about it. Something about a cool box and a bill. Well, it was an envelope. Okay, envelopes are good. With four coupons for a complete seven point tune up for our sewing machines from Family Sewing. Yay! Well, thank you, Larry at Family Sewing. That's yeah. awesome. So they're gonna they're gonna tune up our four machines. Yeah. That's awesome. The problem yeah, is we have five. I'm excited. Well, these are the embroidery <laughs> machines. Yeah, these are new. These are fine. But yeah. the, the old ones could use some love. Yes. Especially Serge. Mm -hmm. We're excited. Thank you. By the way, this machine's name here is Serge. It's not, this, it's not just the Serger. Its name is Serge. Okay. I think I'm going to turn it on today. That'd be kind of cool. Let's see what happens. It needs a 7.2 nut. Sure does. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. That's neat. Yeah. This room is looking so nice. As opposed to this dog. This bad dog. Lights about right though. Wow. One don't know, and the other ain't sure. <laughs> New intern, Mike Moretti. Welcome to the Geek Group. Thank you. Tell him your story. Um, You're in the blog. There's more people watching my little camera than are ever going to watch your big one today. I promise you that. So. Tell them who you are. You're famous uh, on the internet now. Mike Moretti. I'm a student at Grand Valley and here for an internship. Okay. What's your major? Film and video. Yeah? What's your focus in your internship? Uh, fiction filmmaking. Fiction filmmaking. Mm -hmm. you, you, you found an internship in the one thing we don't do. <laughs> you want to work on fire trucks? We got that. Here. You guys are late. What is it, Chris? Fire truck! So apparently that's the secret word today. Hey, you know what we can do now? Uh, you ever see Jackass where they do the fire truck, fire hose rodeo? Oh God! They, they tied, they put a platform so you could stand on the end of the hose. They had it hanging from a crane, and they just held on for dear life. Dude, did oh, you you saw his backside when he got up, he right? Tore his ass. Just yeah. Well, he was wearing on. nothing but underwear. He had underwear and a mud or a poncho. All right, so we've got. You want me to get? I just want to see if it'll like dump, but oh. I think I don't think it, I don't think it'll just flow out like without the running because started it's higher. Than, I don't know how to prime it and stuff, dude. I only have a fundamental like. I got some rough ideas, and if we do it wrong, we can do it really. We can wrong. break shit really bad. It could suck. But if I take tank discharge, oh, that is an under, or it's it's cockeyed. Yeah. All right. Now that's passenger side, inch and a half rear. And let's see if anything just falls out of it. I don't think it will, because it's up. Is that how high it is? Passenger side, inch and a half rear. Driver's side. Hey, 
Hey, this hose doesn't have any ends on it. Yeah, it's a retired hose. Turn off the thing. Turn off the, the fill. See, that's what we want to find. Hit the master switch. Black switch up above where the radio would be. There you go. All right, yeah, we're still only at half full, so we're cool there. See, all you need to do is watch that back up. When did that movie come out? Yeah, 90-something? You think they're still using 70s vintage fire truck? Huh? They're leaking the tank or something else? I think that's something else. I'm going to flip a couple things back out. Tell me if it starts leaking again. Ready? Tank discharge. It hasn't stopped. Okay. Tank fill research. So this is, first you do, first you do that and then this. Or the first this and then this. But you do these two pretty much at the same time. This gets water from the tank into the pump. This gets water from the pump back to the tank. So now you're circulating. And then for what we've got there, you want to do that. Now it doesn't tell me, it says that that's inch and a half, but it doesn't tell me the diameter on the reel. Um, I don't know the diameter on the reel nozzle. It may or may not fit. Uh, no, I already looked at that. It doesn't fit, it's, it's too, small. too small. Okay. Um, We could try it, but we don't know what the hell we're doing if we could break something. Because I don't know the operation of the relief valve enough, and this is probably stuck. She said they had last year a fire, the local fire department. Yeah, but they know out. how to use it. Right. I'm, but I'm saying nothing should be terribly too stuck. All right. Oh. What? That's how we fix the idle issue. Yeah. Just pull that out a little bit, and all of a sudden, the idle just fine. All right. Um. <laughs> also, we have another problem. Mm -hmm. We'd have to start and let it idle mm -hmm. in this room. Or we could back it out. Not we'd, have, we'd have to back it out right away. Um, I'm going to wait until... We're, we're going to get some instruction on it on Tuesday. All right. So let's just wait because I don't want to fuck anything up. I just... Yeah, you can kill the master. I just wish we had a hose this big because we could just Oof. douche out the tank. Yeah, if we had a, if we had a two inch line, we'd be safe. Say the one we have is stuck. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit. Pretty, pretty sure it's going to Because, yeah, this tank discharge takes it from the, like, all right, you start up, you do the pump thing yeah. with the gear shift, then you hit tank discharge. That brings your water from the tank to here. And the idea is you only use the tank as a buffer until you start to draft off something, like off a hydrant or off a pond, pool or right. a pond or whatever. So. You start this while another dude's doing this, because this just buys you that time so that you can immediately fight fire. But you do that, you're, now you're from here to here. You do this, now you're from here back into there, so it's a loop and it's pumping and it's happy and it's cool. Then you get a set your pressures and that's done with a relief valve and a throttle. And you get it, you use this to get it up to like, let's say for that line you want about 100 PSI. Okay. And this is our vacuum, so what we want over here is pump pressure. So you get up to 100 PSI and you twiddle that till you get up to there. Adjust this to where it's just closed. So you just you bring it up like half a turn at a time. All right? Now, I don't know anything about the engine cooler side of things. Primer. It's part of the engine cooler thing. It, yeah, it looks part of the engine cooler thing, but there's also, this may or may not be part of that. This may be part of this, because you got to prime this up. Hello? I'm on my way. So, yeah, then once you've got your pressure where you want it, for what we're doing there, which is a passenger side inch and a half, pull that out and then tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak to get it right at 100 years.
That's everything I know. Which, with a buck, will get you a short beer just about anywhere. Ah. I'm going to lunch. That's so bad, too. Two burly people. He's got handles. See, he's got four sets of handles. Though. They're expecting four little guys. <laughs> Oh, it was World War II. Guys were a lot smaller back then. Yeah. Guys like us were Marines. <laughs> we weren't on the Navy boats, we were in the Marine Corps. Okay. Poop a little there? Two. Huh? Where? Uh, with the other bullshit. Not in the path. It okay. has to be off to the side, not in the path. Well, I might set it down in the path for now. Go back to that corner. There's a spot. There's a landing spot back there. How you doing? Just outside the line. So oh, uh, footing and whatnot. Right to the chair. <laughs> See, it's outside the path. Totally acceptable. Yay! Wasn't that fun? Uh-huh. Yay! All right, you're rolling. All right. Tell them who you are and what you do. I'm Jason Kerr. I'm with the New North Center for Design and Business. We're based out of Holland, a nonprofit that helps people learn about design and innovation. Now, you are a for serious nonprofit professional dude. You for serious. This, for reals, this yo. This is my full-time job. Yes. Right. He, he actually gets like a serious paycheck. It's not, he doesn't work in education. Well, he does work in education, but it's a totally different kind of education. <laughs> he like, they actually get paid. So, I want you to tell, in your own words, in your own opinion, everything, whatever you want to tell the world about this place. So, I came here, I didn't know anything about it other than it was here, and it was a makerspace. And I came here and I found a place that is unpolished in the right way, that's got people that are passionate, that actually know what they're doing and resources, not just equipment, but resources that come with people to do a lot of stuff, anything, really. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about all the businesses that I work with and all the products that they make and all the creative constipation that they have that they can't really figure out how to get out. And I'm looking at the Geeks group going, maybe this is like the x lax for them to be able to get something out of their head and make something with their hands. And a lot of people I deal with, myself included, it's better days not making things that are tangible. We solve problems, we help people make money, we help businesses grow and hire and all that, and it's really important. But we don't always make something at the end of the day. And I think there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of companies out there, there's a lot of younger generation leaders that are taking on companies that they're inheriting that want to make something new. And I'm looking around going, this place could help them do that. And that's pretty unique. And I don't know, I've never really been to a place like that. And it's a shame that more people haven't been to a place like that. So that's my experience today. Cool. I just, I, it's a normal thing, like people come here for like a tour and that. Yeah. Like we'll get people that'll visit from out of town that are members and that. Yeah. And when they show up, I hand them a camera yeah. and say, just go get your impression yeah. of it. I want to see it through your eyes because there's a lot of people, exactly what you said, where you want to share this experience with more yeah. people. This is going to go out to a thousand people today. Yeah. This is how I'm reaching those new people. So I'm 33, right? And I was, I benefited from the fact that my parents gave me a Commodore 64 and a Mac 512, like from the get-go. I had this in my room and I got to play and I made fonts and I designed stuff and I typed my homework when nobody else was doing that. And I took a laptop to class before people did that. And I worked at Motorola and I made stuff. I worked in the radio lab with the IDEN people making Nextels and stuff like that. And I, so Josh took me down to the, the computer area, the archives. Oh God. It's like a trip down memory lane because all of these devices that meant something to me along the way, like triggered a lot of interesting memories. Yeah. Remember when I saw that in a Mac world, or I remember when I used that at school for the first time and somebody let me try something. And I've got a three-year-old, Henry. And I think about the fact like, how am I helping him do that? 
am I giving him the resources and the experiences and the people and the place to do that? I don't know. I'm trying to, but he's not been here. Like, what could he do if he came here? He's got ideas all the time. He's making shit out of Legos. Constantly. I love we it. have a lot of toys. Exactly. Like, giant pile of connects. Yeah. So, there you go. I need to get him over here. I'm okay with that. Good. <laughs> well, thank you for Good coming, night. sir. <laughs> So what you got going on? Taking the cylinder head off. Yeah? What are you going to do with it once you take the cylinder head off? Port it. Yeah? Change the valve stem seal. Which reminds me, we need to get a tool. What do we need? We need a valve spring compressor. We don't have one? We have one. Yeah. Well, okay, if we have one, it's going to be the V8 one, which looks kind of like a claw puller. No, ours looks like a funny pair of pliers. Still not it. Okay. This one, you, it's bolts to like where the camshaft bolts to. Okay. And then there's this arm, and it's got a little piece that comes down, a cup that sit, compresses the. Can you find it on Amazon? Send me a link. Probably, yeah. Amazon. Okay. But I'm gonna need that to put this back together. So we should probably order one. I can get it apart without it. Okay. That go, that goes really fast. But... You may have to catch the spring somewhere across the room, but you can get apart without it. No problem. Um. Springs aren't as bad as finding the keepers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I got this bolt here, two bolts here, I guess. And there's two boxes. Right? So, we may need to, to borrow Jordan. For what? We have a mission he is uniquely suited for. Is it getting those ceiling snakes? No. No, it's, uh, it's getting a pipe that is inside the core of the fire truck. But to get there, you have to get through a tiny little door. Or you have to take off, like, big parts of the fire truck. So we either remove big panels or we stuff his ass through a door that's about a foot square. I think he can do it. He could probably do that. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if the fire department had to come out to help remove him <laughs> from the fire truck? <laughs> How do you explain that? So we got a we got a guy here stuck. He's stuck. What's he stuck in? A uh, fire truck. <laughs> where are you? <laughs> no. At that point, they don't ask where are you. They're like, oh, geek group. Yeah, we're on our way. Oh, we're sending everyone. Yeah. <laughs> They're all on their way. You only need two guys for the job, but we just want to see this because <laughs> we've dealt with you stupid fucks before. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. What is he doing? Did I mention we got a fire truck? Have you have you seen the fire truck? What are you doing? That was a weird sound. Oh, look at that. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's our first part of the crank. Hey, Batman? About two and a half minutes. Oh, okay. Batman. What are you doing? Turn the air up. No. Do I talk to you or Jerry about a new clip on my radio? Talk to Jerry because I think he already has a new clip. I think I might just forego the clip and order a holster that fits it. Alright, I'll start Wait, wait you, you actually, you broke the clip again. Again, yeah. Okay, because I, I, broke, I broke the stud, or the ribbon, oh, and no, I just I, put I a pin through it. Yeah. If you find a good holster, let me know and get me one, too. Yeah, I'll do some digging. I don't want to get a bunch of so there's probably no spares. They already dissected. We gotta let uh, Harvey know. We might just suck us up. Live tooling. Oh my god, it's so cool. Live tooling.
More life tooling! How many different live tools are we using? Three? How the hell do we have three? We have four. We have, but they're all this way? Yeah. Okay. How many do we have this way? Just one. Just one. So we have one radial and all the rest. We have, we have three axial, one radial. Okay. Four axial. Four axial, one radial. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We're using three in this op. Yeah. That's so badass. I want to get video in there. <laughs> It's amazing! I want to teach people about it! It's so cool! I feel really bad that you can't see that worth a shit. Because it's really cool what's happening in there. You find some sort of old weather cam with it. Either that or I need an air curtain on the inside here, like an air knife. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, man, we just take one of the weather cam wipers off. Yeah. Our air compressor is already very taxed. Yeah. We, we need an air compressor that can keep up with the lab. If we had reservoirs, it'd be fine. Speaking of the air compressors, I'm going to tear one apart. Oh, basement? The one in the basement? Yeah, I gotta get the belt off. Yeah. I was gonna do that Monday, but shit happened. I understand. It's okay though, Batman. You know why? We got fire truck. Yay! Fire truck! Yay! Yeah, they're coming out pretty good. Yeah? Let me see. That's beautiful. Backside. Obviously, that's the cutoff point, so it needs more work to it. But other than that. And you're just doing this off a solid bar, like yeah. you just feed it to just a stop. Yeah, here. So there's no material waste. Well, there's a little bit. Not hot, though. We're not, we're not curving out. And I'm curve. cutting off with the skinniest cutoff tool I have, so... In stainless? What is that, one inch stainless bar? Yeah. Alright. Well, make 150 of them. One's okay. okay. We'll be back. Today's October 3rd. October 3rd is Unification Day for Germany. Yay! It is the day when East Germany formally rejoined West Germany to become Germany. And part of that was a whole process where the wall fell down and borders were opened and people had free trade over to the Soviet bloc again. And one of the wonderful things that happened during this was a lot of foods that were not available to people who lived in East Germany when it was walled up, such as bananas and pineapple, became readily available again. Also, maraschino cherries are not something that you could get in this Germany, but you could get in the free world. Yeah. So to celebrate that, it is a common thing in eastern parts of Germany to make a food that you would not otherwise be able to have made from this East Germany. And I chose upside down pineapple cake because that was what I always known for reunification day. So to share with you the freedom of the free world, you get cake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet. And you just missed the whole speech. <laughs> <laughs> so because you were here for it, you have to recite all of your known history of the Eastern Bloc right now. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> cake! <laughs> It's cake of freedom and capitalism. Capitalist cake. It's all kind of upside down cake. No. Uh, no, I have not, but I will before you leave. Maybe. Yes. Don't pump it anymore. <laughs> Running out of battery. Oh, you've run out of battery. Hold it to start. Yeah, you did. Buy new cool. batteries. How's that fundraiser going for the new batteries? Oh, oh, oh! So close.
you giving it choke? Yeah. And I'm going back and forth. Joe, Joe uh, is not much travel. Go all the way in. Yeah, all the way in. Battery. Yeah, we might have to use that booster box every time we start it so we get new batteries. Yeah. The batteries. So they're already dead anyway, yeah. so if we boost them again. Well, I'm worried about the little batteries up in the truck. It's right by quarter inch. Because it's got four posts. You do the rainbow, geek crew, hired flag, and anonymous. <laughs> So how much did you learn yesterday in the videos? A lot. Not enough, but a lot. I say it should just be open up that big valve and just let it go. Well, if we just want to dump it out, yeah, but I'm going to try to burn it. Alright, go for oh. it. Going for it. Stay there. Stay there. Training. Camera inside.
yet. That help? I don't think it would, but it's worth a shot. What's your RPMs at? We're sitting at 1500 even. I'm guessing. I'm shouting right into the mic.
camera! That pump's totally off, right? Yeah. Alright. Can you take that off, please? Push that and that. Go on the other side. Huh? You want yeah. The other side? That one, that one needs a wrench or something, but... This is a big... Yeah. Discharge? Yeah. Go ahead. Move this way. Suction, but it's probably going to discharge out of it. Right there you go. I'm going to clean up and ask you to spin it. Alright, now lift the lever. I feel like we should engage the pump. No, because those are vacuum sides. Oh, okay. Now, let's engage the tank. Two gauge. Pull that one and this one. Thank you. Giving it a good flushing out. The other side is a rubber mallet. Yeah, we're going to need a dedicated, like, two to five pound rubber mallet. Just a dead load of these Make sure it's nice and clean. What? To make sure it's nice and clean. We're going to a lot more than we think it is. Uh -huh. How do you like that? <laughs> There's a lot of leaks through that. That should not pass that much water. I'm probably going to replace that valve. Thankfully, that's easy to do. Oh, yeah. Banging. Casey, take the valve. Oh! Okay. Here, I'll wait a second. Let him do it. Hey, Casey, are you getting that off? Yeah. Alright, let me know when you got off. Water will come out probably. Oh. That's 
why we wanted to do that. Because nasty. That is a lot of rusty water. Oh wow. That you're trying to clean out. That was why we filled the tank today, so we could flush everything out. Because nobody has done this in a very long time. Should have filled a tank up with a couple bottles of CLR. Yeah. And then the store, we should get like 30 gallons of antifreeze. No. Fill the tank with antifreeze a little bit, run it through all the pipes. I might fall. Because it's all wet and you might fall, yes. Yeah. Conan, please stop. Biodegradable yeah. RV stuff. Yeah. I just want to it No, come on. It's still draining on the other side, Chris. Huh? It's still draining. Yeah, I know. Okay. We're going to reel up the hoses. Batman's way. Out of Batman's way. Alright, slowly this way. Alright. Go ahead. Blow it less. Huh? Slowly. Uh, I'm trying. This thing goes fast. It's yes. alright if it's not perfectly yes. right next to it. Oh. Wow, you get like a foot gap in between. Go ahead. Better. One of the jobs we're going to do soon is pulling this all out, cleaning it off. My hands are currently doing it. Yeah. All right. There you go. Oh. Yeah, That's the case we'll be making the proper hand cream to go to the next one. Put the cover back on that side. Close them up. Close them up. And take it off. Take it off. Unless you're going to replace it. Get down, please. Well, that's a problem right now, isn't it? Doogie, can you give my son a hand down, please? Hey, put him in the truck. Let's drive it in. Conan, you want to ride in the truck? Yeah. Conan gets to ride in the fire truck! Snows apparently.
got a fire truck. We're guiding the asshole. All right, covers are on, everything's cool. Hang that outside, put the both ends of that outside the door, and then walk out that hose. You know how to do that? We don't, we don't have a pincher roller thing. Pick up, straighten the hose out into the room, pick up the very middle of it, like pull it all the way back till you've got just the middle, and then lift it up well, under the hood, help you. and walk it out. Right around the middle's got a hole. <laughs> That's right, as he rolls it up, it just... No, it won't. You gotta, you gotta hold it up and, like, walk it out. They make a special thing that's just two rollers with two sets of handles. You have one dude hold the hose and two guys walk it down. I think I have the appropriate keychain. I think that's perfectly acceptable keychain for this, but I have one that might Jerry, be better. Jerry's gonna 3D print me a fire truck. I've got one that says remove before flight. It's a little hard to get back. Well, you're not supposed to take it out before. That's how you fly, is with the keychain. <laughs> you guys have fun. Probably because that light before falls off. A light. Water. Yeah. In several states in the USA, it's still legal for an employer to discriminate against an employee based on sexual preference and orientation. Being gay, lesbian, or transgender is a fireable offense, and that's bullshit. So... Give me your twinks! Your bears! Your lipstick lesbians yearning to code PHP! Give me your dykes! Your kinksters! Your furries! And transgenders looking for more! Send these! The rainbowed sparkly code poets to me! Compile with us! We don't care whom you adore! Seriously folks, are you LGBTQ or a champion for their cause? Do you have mad web developing skills? Then we want to talk to you! Visit this link and fill out an application today! Where you are in the world doesn't matter, so get in touch. Straight, bigoted asshats need not apply. In fact, we'll laugh at you if you do.